Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, my name is PixelRiffs, our writer is LoyXP, captions on this video were provided by Liara, and for the record I rebind the F5 key to R and I have a custom knob on my keyboard that lets me right click really fast. If you aren't sure why this is relevant, stick around to hear us talk about how weird Mumbo thinks all his friends are. We've also got exploding villagers, participation trophies for all these millennials, a fight club we can and will talk about, and shops for all the things. So let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. This is the stupidest <laughs> thing I think I've ever participated in. Surprising no one, when trusted with gravity blocks, ZF immediately applies them directly to your forehead. Look at me outrunning it. Ah, oh, so I'm so super quick. Thanks to his ingenuity, the server's permit most dripstone source will be a minigame in which you have to outrun a descending hail of pointed dripstone while dodging the randomized obstacles. To his credit, that does deposit the rock Doritos straight into the player's inventory. And thanks to Ethos testing, we know that this game is both multiplayer and PvP compatible. The other player doesn't even have to know that it's PvP. I'll get the back. Wait, why am I at the back actually? No, this is- I have a secret mission in this run. <laughs> you get a- The spikes! Oh, All right, there we go. <laughs> oh, no. With the money on the server really starting to flow, Azumavoid decides to reward the most accomplished shopkeeps with a shopkeep's sake to remember. Dralis, I am trying to reach 250 diamonds. I need 46 more. And I will get this and one bonus diamond. Like oh, that. bonus diamond, thank you. In the permit office forest, Azuma builds his own store for custom trophies to go out to those who have earned milestone numbers of diamonds through their exploits. Sure, signing up will cost you, but you don't actually have to have the alleged number on hand as long as you've been counting how much your shop is bringing in. 10 or 15 diamonds to sign up. Then you'll get a model like this, and each time you reach a new goal, you get to upgrade it to the next model. Naturally, for some, this will be more of an achievement than others, as Corallus could surely make 100 diamonds worth of candles, but selling them would probably require a server-wide power outage. Shesh, Ram. Oh yeah. my god, you blended... Hi. <gasps> <laughs> Speed Rallis! He's back, Shashro. Still, he is determined to at least give the gang an opportunity to buy his product and joins Azuma for a lecture in automated beekeeping. Letting us tell you here and now that Azuma does in fact explain Corallus a thing about the birds and the bees. With his knowledge, Corallus is ready to provide the community with bee nests, bee hives, bees wax, and of course, the bees knees. So we've got about two shulkers worth of bee nests, and, and then all the bee nests we will be selling We'll have three bees inside. N not not three bees. Not gonna give anything away from free. Do do you mind? Cubfan135 is much more clever with his supply since he's not just selling people the fireworks. The network of clients with his firework backyard shows grows rapidly, even including B00, who now has a machine that launches a rocket every nightfall. Yeah, that's never going off, is it? Yeah, let's sit here and enjoy here this go. together. Here we go. They didn't sleep. Oh, Clear! Oh, there's one. <laughs> one! We got one! Hey! But this means that eventually all of these folks will come back to Cub's shop asking for more multicolored explosives. Best of all, Hypnotized actually ordered a custom firework launcher aimed at the sky just above his neighbor's castle. The play here is to send beautiful patterns into Wells Knight's backyard whenever Hypno feels like he's still angry about the tunnel between their bases that Wells made. It's well enough he's got a brand new redstone auto sorter for his storage room, he doesn't need Wells Knight sorting through his chests too. This is the same system that I made last season, and once again, Lummy Thief is the person who made it, so check out their channel. Etho and Cub join forces to bring that vision together, and of course nuke his attic while doing so. Etho, the redstone master, gave us some nice tips. More TNT. More TNT, <laughs> yeah. Just... Oh no, it blew up! Oh, oh no! What? no! How? With the business actively booming, Cub even glamours up the firework factory back at home, painting multicoloured columns on the deep slate exterior as if to represent the tower chart of incoming profits. I think it looks pretty good actually. Yeah, not too bad. This is not even the worst that may come Wells' way, seeing as how he decided to pay full symmetry for her terraforming services with an IOU. Assistance with a project build or task. Oh ho 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 ho! I do love an IOU. A disturbing precedent to set when one of False's rivers now circles out her base, breaking away Iskal, Stress, and a few others. The stream even runs underground into a secret waterlogged passage to False's backyard, so her residence is totally an island depending on your Y elevation. Yes, and it is an underground river right now. I don't even think anyone knows about it. Smallish Beans becomes his old Shrek skin for a bit to see if anyone notices, and needless to say, anyone notices. <laughs> I was like, who's on the server? Who is that? Why are you green? 
Though his main goal for the week is to get a honey farm set up, he is also very interested in fresh meat. Specifically, those who pass through a secret fridge door in his restaurant can join the Sword Fight Club, where you presumably fight swords. Man, the first guy to bring a pen here is gonna win big. Sword Fight Club. Number one rule of Sword Fight Club? We don't sword. Talk about Sword Fight Club. Naturally, his first candidate for the gauntlet is Gemini Tay, who spent so much of the past season collecting heads. This season, however, she takes the reverse approach and instead collects one, but a really big one. Oh, that's creepy. I like it. Utilizing her knowledge of spheres, organic building, and being diagonal, Gem arranges an enormous skull pointing out of the side of the Cherry Mountain. Would you call this terraforming or organics? Uh, if they're part of the terrain and you're making it look like terrain, then it must be terrain, yes? Right. Now this will take some intricate finagling to put headphones and sunglasses on. It's going to need to accessorize to be more fashionable than Susan, <laughs> who stress monster adds a storage cube to the back of this week once she's evacuated all the cats. And look, it's like the stars are sparkling in the sky. It's so cozy. She even finds a use for the fake diamonds Azuma has been circulating. They make good labels for the valuables chests. Warped and skulk blocks provide the pillars and ceilings, but there's still room for a sheep farm in the basement, an essential build considering she owns the license to sell light grey and orange. Unfortunately, she didn't realise her new home came with an alarm system. To be fair though, Iskel only just installed it. Oh my god. What is that noise? What the hell? Hold on. Why hold is on, that? Is... Wait. Wait. You're stressing me out. Wait. What did okay. we in retaliation, Stress insists he also install a better nether portal than the Kandinsky painting they're currently working with. But together, the two of them get so wrapped up in goofing around that the new nether portal ends up surrounded by a knife and fork, and it's up to anyone else on the server to take up the mantle of complaining about it. At this moment in time, we uh, kind of can't say anything uh, about that first arch, which you said, <laughs> I don't, that looks ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'd think Iskal did this to procrastinate on organizing his storage, but the joke's on you, he's already done that part. It helps that Doc M actually sold him a bunch of shulkers by offering a log in each one. It means he has enough boxes to rebrand them for his rocket shop, and even considers setting up a system where the factory sends the finished product to him by mail. Such a, <laughs> such a beautiful <laughs> built house, shop. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. He settles on installing the aforementioned alarm system to let him know when one of the farms has run out of packing crates, and wires it up to Stress Monster and Rendog's bases for good measure. We're gonna test this out. <laughs> yes! That's brilliant! Somewhere in this time span, his cyan tube is rebranded with the False Beans logo. When questioned about it, False blames Joel Smallish Beans, despite the fact that these beans are huge, and anyway, the prank is clearly signed X. Love Joel! And a kiss! Joel is more than willing to visit the scene of the crime to confirm that Iskel's latest addition looks like a face. No, he's got, he's got strong kneecaps. Skinny. He does, never skips okay. a leg day. In a place much deeper and darker, DocM77 has gone back to using wardens to mob-proof his tunnel bore. The zombie villagers just weren't cutting it, and an unfortunate accident on stream led to him losing almost all his equipment. Fortunately, he's back in action quite quickly, and the new mob switch can dispose of the old one. Uh. They're taking them out. That's funny. After appraising B00's approach to the bamboo shop, Doc returns to the hourglass and adds a timely Big Wood sign, then gets to decorating the actual shop space below and adding a redstone system that splits payments 50 50 for the co owned shop spaces. The interior is surprisingly cozy for the scale of the hourglass above, but is at least well lit for the future when the hermits blot out the sun with all their sand gathering. Hey man, what's crack a lacking? Hey dude, yeah. may I borrow some glass bottles from you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might not have the license for that, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> All can. Right. This is a robbery. The jury is still out on whether the trapping of their villagers counts as Doc's revenge on Cleo for salmoning the top half of his hourglass as well. But one thing for certain is now that all the traders have died, Cleo super doesn't owe Doc any of the sales money. No! <gasps> yeah, no, I should have figured that. <laughs> Right, let's get rid of the redstone at least. But the absolute cornucopia of mending sales isn't going anywhere either, as with the donated emerald supply, Cleo is able to reassemble their book trading hall in about an hour, so they can continue selling their coffee you can't drink guilt-free. I don't know how to do this. I wanted to learn how to do this anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> also, if their cup models are all retextured pumpkins, does that mean that all the drinks are pumpkin spice? <laughs> 
Also finding himself recently retextured, Joe Hills mails himself to the wrong address by stepping into a nether portal that disastrously leads into the server postal system. Clearly he hadn't swallowed enough stamps beforehand, otherwise he might have arrived at good times with Scar's base. I have only speculated about how funny it would be to mess with Etho, and already his mail system seems to have activated to defend him. Okay, I, I was afraid of Etho, but I'm not anymore. Look, I, look at me. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm f After Joe is eventually returned to sender, Pearlescent Moon turns up to fix the portal, and Joe can get back to his plan of farming black dye by collecting wither roses. Unfortunately for him, the wither escapes immediately because there's no longer a mountain there to contain it, and he has to enlist Wells Knight, Azuma, Rendog, and False Symmetry to fight it, which they do once they've managed to find their spacesuits and made it to the upper atmosphere. We're fighting it in space! Oh my gosh. <laughs> We got hey! it! Woo! Nice! I'm surprised they didn't run into a Gigacorp rocket on re-entry because Rendog summons one which assembles itself into a beacon shop, which is surprising because he obviously ordered some flashlights and walkie-talkies. I gotta say, very impressed with the delivery speed of Gigacorp. Usually they're a couple of days late because, you know, they gotta send these rockets across the Gigaverse. I guess the shop's stock counts as flashlights, and he has spent plenty of time in the usually lethal company of Wither Skeletons. The companionship of Hypno is decidedly less fatal, and unless you're a zombie piglin. The two of them team up to make their own gold and bartering farms, the better to be supplied with obsidian for the foreseeable future. Oh my goodness, yeah, this farm is so good. It's working, it's rain and bacon down here, man. They aren't making as much bacon as XB crafted though. Elsewhere on the nether roof, he set up a hoglin farm to better supply half foods with the whole hog. Part of me feels like I really should have looked up a tutorial or something, uh, but I think this is how it's done. When he meets Beef to discuss pork, the two of them have already made a profit on golden carrots, which they split 50-50, and have the opportunity to lure in Hypno for a personal shopping experience. Almost too personal. See, all we gotta do is just oh, yeah, drag people in and then hound them until they buy stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Thanks for the thanks for the purchase. You're, you're welcome. Come, Come back, back again anytime. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. I'll be right tomorrow. back. Yeah, oh, tomorrow, we need more yes. food tomorrow. All right. <laughs> it's all fresh. Bye. Okay. We're just, we're, we're the best. Vintage Beef took it personally that Doc M was dealing shulkers to people over the table and heads out to the Far End Islands where Azuma helps him building the ending credits shulker farm design. After just a few hours work and a few minutes AFK, Beef has enough stock to build a pop-up shulker shop, then compare notes with Zombie Cleo on how Doc M has wronged them both this week. He killed them? <laughs> he killed them. Oh my, Doc! Um. That's okay. He didn't but retaliate just, to me. If it's just me, he retaliates again. <laughs> yeah. You don't get away scot-free. If he doesn't come after you, I'm coming after you. <laughs> I want you to be what? clear. <laughs> That's not how this works. Shortly after the words Shelka Shop are mentioned, Etho turns up and bargains his way to a lifetime supply, leaving beef to farm basalt and sweet berries a few hundred diamonds richer. 45 diamond blocks. Get your shops up at 45 diamond blocks. I yeah. might have made a big mistake here, but <laughs> lifetime <laughs> supply. Lifetime supply. These aren't the only lifetime deals Etho makes, although the other one comes from Impulse, who has flattened out the cyberpunk city area and wants to line the streets with frog lights. After seeing his share of shady deals, when Corrales contacts him about his extended extended warranty warranty, Impulse wants a straightforward trade with Etho, a brown glass permit for the rights to use and collect from the Froglight farm privately. Etho's only other condition is that Impulse promotes the Froglight shop to the rest of the server, which Impulse acts upon immediately. Froglight spokesman. All right, uh, should I start now? Sure, you got something in mind. Cub, have you seen how amazing frog lights are inside the cyberpunk city? I, I walked I... in on a deal for frog lights here, didn't I? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, okay. And after a quick guide to the farm, Impulse can time-lapse all the roads he wants. This will be good news for B00, who has now built a perimeter wall around the cyberpunk city, which he invites the hermits to graffiti to advertise their shops. Something tells me the first graffiti will probably be about Etho's frog light shop. But the second might be about B Dubs' bamboo alley. After growing a truckload of bamboo and experimenting with the crafter, he builds a whole row of bamboo themed shops, reasoning that the server might pay well to take the pain out of crafting blocks like mosaic and bamboo trapdoors. He also owns the string permit, so he can sneak a craft your own scaffolding business in there, and plans to prove scaffolding is the bee's knees with a mini game round back that challenges hermits to race him in ringing two bells with any other utility block. 12.48 seconds. Good luck. You think you're so cool? Try to beat that. And finally, there's Mumbo, who claims to be the least weird person on Hermitcraft and sets out to prove it. 
There's all sorts of strange keybinds, people using odd pieces of equipment. It's a mess on here. By lining up nine of his friends and asking them to share their unusual play styles, recording setups, and rebound keyboard keys they've been keeping quiet about this whole time, we discover Grian has been playing with the same headset since before you were born, Joe Hill sprints by actually using his feet, and holding shift with your thumb is not the only way you can play Twister with your keyboard. <laughs> I am just left-handed, that's my only <laughs> Thank you for the invite to this freak show. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.